I take it, a good portion of it, with uh, Julie McCormick, and uh, as a result of her actions, correct? Uh, that's correct. You know, there's a certain ethic and integrity, I think, when you work in this field, you have to have. And I've been kind of disheartened to learn that a lot of people don't have that. Ledford says staff made multiple complaints about male juveniles paying closed-door visits to McCormick's office. If you're, if you're a female staff and you have a male juvenile, you don't go anywhere off camera. That's, you know, there are certain areas you just don't go. Um, clinicians and stuff, they... And who did that? Julie. I was not the only one that saw it. Um, it had been reported to Betty several times at, at least four months ago. She's referring to Betty Grimm, the superintendent of the Nampa facility, and one of three defendants in the whistleblower lawsuit. One month after that lawsuit was filed, the state quietly posted Betty Grimm's job. I called to ask her why. She said she's retiring after 19 years. But the changes don't placate Ledford. I don't really trust anybody out there, except for the people that I'm on this with. Is that because all this is coming from the top down? You bet. Now, we asked for comment on this story from the head of yeah. Juvenile Correction, Sharon Herrigfeld, but we're told that she cannot comment on personnel matters. It sounds like this isn't the end. It does not look like it. Obviously, the lawsuit has a ways to go. Okay, well, and thanks so much. So a Middleton citizens group wants the town's mayor kicked out of office. Today, the group turned in 20 signatures, officially requesting a petition to recall Mayor Darren Taylor. The group also released a 100-page report which says Mayor Taylor has been conducting unethical and illegal activities. In response, Taylor says his actions are being misconstrued. However, both sides say the issue will soon be out of their hands. We don't want to. We don't want to point the finger and say you're guilty. We want the prosecuting attorney to make that assumption himself. We'll cooperate with any investigation or audit or anything else that needs to be done. We have nothing to hide. The city clerk now has 15 days to review the signatures and decide if the group can continue with the petition. The citizens group will then need more than 500 signatures from Middleton residents if they want to recall Mayor Taylor. No easy day. The new tell-all autobiography of a Navy SEAL is generating a lot of controversy yes. and more than likely a stack of lawsuits. Sure, but while the book details the successful raid for bin Laden, it also tells of an unsuccessful mission to rescue Idaho's Bo Bergdahl. Mac King is live in the studio with our story. Yeah, Michelle Roland Bergdahl began his fourth year in captivity in June. News of attempted and failed rescues and trades have trickled out in recent months. But none so detailed as this one. When an American soldier went missing at the start of summer, the author writes, we dropped everything to find him. I have a very, very good family that I love back home in America. And I miss them. Every day <clears throat> that I'm gone, I miss them, and I'm afraid that I might never see them again. The evening after the Taliban first released this video of captured Idaho soldier Bo Bergdahl, a former Navy SEAL says he and his team received a very credible tip on the imprisoned Haley native's whereabouts. We don't have much intel to go off of, that SEAL recounts his troop commander saying, but this is a priority. Written under the pen name Mark Owen, No Easy Day dispels much of the criticism of the American government's lack of effort in rescuing Bergdahl. Let me go. Let, get me to come home. Owen recounts intelligence analysts tracking every and any lead in Bergdahl's disappearance, including the one that led him and his team to an area south of Kabul after the release of that first video. Owen recalls a full moon and a level of visibility normally leading decision makers to scrap a night mission. We need to accept a little more risk because of who we're going after, Owen says his troop commander told him. The SEAL team landed in helicopters just outside the range of rocket-propelled grenades. Tracers streaked across the night sky. And the SEALs began taking small arms fire as soon as they landed. We weren't fighting second graders, Owen writes. The Taliban are good fighters and we already knew the operation had the potential to get squirrely. Owen says American snipers covered his advance, at one point igniting the propellant for one of those rocket-propelled grenades on an enemy fighter's back. He looked like a giant sparkler, Owen recalled. There was no sign of Bergdahl, but we figured he had to be somewhere nearby. There were too many fighters here, and they were all well-armed. The fighters had morphine kits and grenades. They were professionals, not farmers who picked up AK-47s when the crops weren't in season. Owen's team lost no men, killed every insurgent on site, and suffered one injury. Medics managed to patch up sufficiently to save the man's leg and life. They did not, however, find Bergdahl. But in my gut, Owen writes, I think he was there at some point. We probably missed him by a few hours. 
or maybe in the fight they were able to escape. I'm a prisoner. I want to go home. Owen also mentions in less detail further attempts to rescue Bergdahl, calling it, quote, a race to get him back before they smuggled him to Pakistan. American intelligence worried the Taliban might sell Bergdahl to a different terrorist network. Love Studio, Matt King, Fox 9, on your side. A Fruitland man accused of killing his grandmother faces a judge. 18-year-old Tyler Naughton is charged with second-degree murder and grand theft. Naughton's grandmother, Cheryl Kenny, was 60 years old. Prosecutors say Naughton shot Kenny four times. The Payette County Sheriff is not releasing a motive in this case because it's still under investigation. He is scheduled to be back in court, Naughton is, on the 17th. Bond was set at half a million dollars. Two Canyon County men have been arrested on federal drug charges. We were there this morning when police raided this house on Iowa Street in Caldwell, one of several properties they searched. In all, police executed nine federal search warrants. The two men were indicted by a federal grand jury charged with distributing meth, cocaine and marijuana. Police tell us more arrests are expected. And police say an elaborate scam is targeting people looking for a place to rent. Here's how it works. The scammers find a vacant home, sometimes by breaking into it, and then pose as the landlord or a real estate agent wanting to give you a tour. They'll ask you for a deposit to hold the house, and before you know it, they make off with your money. If you think something is strange, call police. Idaho is one of 35 states providing less funding for its public schools than it did four years ago. And those cuts are big consequences for public schools. However, there are some schools here in the Valley that are not feeling that same pinch. Eric Fink has the story. Michelle, I set out to see if local private schools are feeling the strain of the economy like its public school counterparts, and at least one private school principal says not so much. Take a look at these numbers. A recent national study shows Idaho public schools lost 19% of funding over the last five years, which results in spending $1,100 less per child this year than in 2008. That puts Idaho 47th in the nation. Julie Vermillion is the principal of Nampa Christian Elementary, a private school in the Valley that says the economy hasn't hurt their education. We have a steady enrollment. It's nice to know we're stable, we're in the black, and it's, it, it's nice to know to start a school year where we know our kids are getting what they need and the teachers are getting what they need. Um, we continually, you know, to score great, you know, we have great academics here, and it is a nice feeling when I compare it to what I've been through in the past. There are 320 students enrolled in Nampa Christian pre-K through 6th grade. The elementary school's enrollment increased by 150 over the last two years. And if you're concerned about an issue going on at your school, let us know so we can look into it. Just go to our website, IdahoOnYourSide.com, and click on the On Your Side tab. Live tonight in studio, Eric Fink. Now the On Your Side forecast with Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval. Just a picture-perfect day outside of the Treasure Valley. Temperatures real comfortable this afternoon, although it did hit 90. If you felt it was hot, it certainly was, at least for that small period of time during the afternoon. But boy, that sun going down earlier now at 8.13. It gets cooler a lot quicker. And, of course, the longer nights calling for the cooler mornings. But this morning, we hit 55, which is right where it should be. 55 this morning. I think we'll have similar temperatures coming up over the next couple of days. Record high still running at 100, set back in 1963. 34 for the record low back in the 1880s. Sunrise tomorrow morning will come in just after 7.13. All right now, temperatures, well, you look at the highs of the day near 90 throughout the Treasure Valley. We'll get a little bit of a cool down, especially in eastern Idaho and up towards Salmon. The East Central Mountains will get a bit of a cool down and a bit of a breeze coming up for tomorrow. High temperature should be right about 86, so still warm, pleasant, a little bit of a breeze. I think there's going to be some clouds around tomorrow. Those high clouds that dim the sunshine, in some places it could be kind of that gray overcast for a little while, a high overcast. Then it goes away, we get the sunshine back, and wait till you see my weekend forecast. We're going to talk about that, plus <laughs> also going to answer a trivia question coming up, guys. Uh, what's the hottest temperature it's ever been recorded in Boise for the month of September? Hottest Eight. for September. Hottest for September. Mm. Give me time. Okay. You've got time to ponder that. We'll think on that one. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Well, coming up next on Fox 9 On Your Side, 20 years after accepting his party's nomination for president, Bill Clinton takes the stage, hoping to spur some momentum for President Obama. And still ahead, worries over weather or a lack of enthusiasm. Why did President Obama change up the venue for tomorrow night's acceptance speech? Roland Ferris. Michelle Edmonds. Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval. Sports with Paul Gerke.
This is Fox 9 on your side at 9. Weather is brought to you by Steve's Hometown Toyota. Try Steve's Hometown Toyota in Ontario. September 25th, the new Fox Tuesday kicks off with New Girl's new season. Whee! Then, welcome Ben and Kate. Stay away from my sister before you find out what six years of Frog McGaw feels like. Well, like, year and a half plus, like, four years on and off. I was traveling. Followed by another all-new new girl. What am I looking at here? Pure, unadulterated friendship. And the Mindy Project. <laughs> Can't believe you're tattling. Tattling is when a little girl does it, okay? When a hot woman does it, it's called whistleblowing. The new Fox Tuesday premieres September 25th on Fox. <laughs> It only takes one sixtieth of a second to shoot the most photographed spot in America. Here's what you do with the rest of your trip. Plan your adventures escape at wyomingtourism.org. Sure, other places can sell you a Tempur-Pedic mattress, but they can't custom fit you to one like Mattress Land Sleep Fit Center. Nobody else has our exclusive bed match diagnostic process that uses thousands of measurements to find the best Tempur-Pedic mattress for your unique body profile. Right now, you can save up to $200 on Temper Contour and Temper Cloud mattresses. And we're so sure you'll get deep, healthy sleep with your custom fit Tempur-Pedic mattress. We back it with an exclusive six-month risk-free guarantee. Find us at mattressland.com now. Old Faithful erupts every 90 minutes or so. Here's what you do in between. Plan your adventure escape at wyomingtourism.org. You're watching Fox 9 on your side at 9. It's been two decades. Kind of hard to believe how time flies since former President Bill Clinton accepted the Democratic nomination for president. And tonight he took center stage once again to help a man he says deserves to be a two-term president. It's tonight's top story in our red, white, and blue report. Clinton took the moment to nominate President Obama as the standard bearer for the Democratic Party and said he wants a president who is cool on the outside but burns for America on the inside. He also made uh, paid homage, I should say, to uh, First Lady Michelle Obama's speech at the DNC, saying after hearing her speech, he wants a man with the sense to marry a woman like Michelle. Clinton then went on to point to the heated rhetoric and the divide between the parties in this election, saying he never could have worked that way. Screw my foundation, both in America and around the world. I'm working all the time with Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. Sometimes I couldn't tell you for the life who I'm working with because we focus on solving problems and seizing opportunities and not fighting all the time. And here's what I want the people at home to think about. When times are tough and people are frustrated and angry and hurting and uncertain, the politics of constant conflict may be good. But what is good politics does not necessarily work in the real world. What works in the real world is cooperation. Minutes before he took the stage, Clinton actually sent out an email to President Obama's supporters urging all of them to donate $5 apiece to help shore up the fundraising gap between the president and Republican challenger Mitt Romney. As far as the president taking the stage tomorrow night, there's suddenly been a change mm. of venue. That's right. His camp says the move is the result of bad weather. While Republicans claim, though, that it has more to do with a lack of support. Fox News correspondent Ed Henry has the story. As President Obama arrived here in Charlotte, aides said he and his campaign team are deeply disappointed that because of weather concerns, they have to move Thursday night's acceptance speech from the outdoor Bank of America Stadium to the much smaller Time Warner Center, leaving thousands of campaign volunteers from around the country brokenhearted about losing their seats. Don't call us, we'll call you, is what we've been told. So we're hoping, we're hoping, but yeah, it is disappointing. Call it Obama 2.0. Thank you! Forget the Greek columns from his first acceptance speech in Denver with a throng of 80,000 fans. And the Republican National Committee used the hashtag President Downgrade to suggest the weather was really cover for the Obama campaign struggling to fill the seats. While top Democrats admit they were planning to bus people in from several states like South Carolina and Georgia, 
they scoffed at the charge of lack of enthusiasm. I think the 65,000 people that were scheduled to come tomorrow night probably disagree with that and will are pretty disappointed that they're not going to be able to come to see the president. We're disappointed too, but the, the chance of severe weather, the chance of putting those people at risk was just too high. There are other problems with top Democratic sources telling Fox that in closed-door meetings here, the president's team is expressing increasing alarm about Republican Mitt Romney raising $100 million in August alone, which could give him a big edge in the final days. Though publicly, they insist they're not worried about a last-minute TV ad assault. The president's ahead or tied in every battleground state, and he's ahead in the national polls. At some point, these ads have diminishing returns. It's a long tradition at these conventions for thousands of red, white, and blue balloons to come streaming down on Thursday night. But if you look up at the rafters here, there's no balloons waiting to come down. That's because originally it was going to be outdoors. You can't do balloons. They were going to do fireworks instead. Well, you can't do that indoors. So I'm told they're still scrambling to figure out what to do because it's too late to order 100,000 balloons. Meanwhile, the president on Thursday will have a national conference call with 10 Tens of thousands of supporters to try and make up for the fact that they didn't get any tickets. In Charlotte at the convention, Ed Henry, Fox News. <laughs> Stay tuned, huh? Yeah, exactly. What do you say? Confetti will have to be I, the alternative, I, I guess. I don't know. Well, as far as the Republican ticket, it was all hands on deck today. Mitt Romney took a break from debate preps and actually made an appearance in New Hampshire. His wife, Ann, spoke with women voters in Ohio. VP candidate Paul Ryan continues to travel around the country. He stopped in Iowa, then in Utah. Hours before Clinton's speech, Ryan took his best guess as to what the former president would discuss and why the current administration isn't in the same situation. We're going to hear from President Clinton tonight in Charlotte. My guess is we'll get a great rendition of how good things were in the 1990s, <laughs> but we're not going to hear much about how things have been the last four years. President Clinton worked with Republicans in Congress to have a budget agreement to cut spending. President Obama a gusher of new spending. Both campaigns will kick back into high gear Friday. After giving his acceptance speech Thursday, President Obama returns to the campaign trail. Both he and Romney have events scheduled in New Hampshire. Coming up next on Fox 9, we are headed back over to see Scott at the Weather Center for his complete On Your Side forecast. And still ahead, we take a look back at the star of last night's installment of the DNC, where it wasn't the keynote speaker, but his daughter <laughs> yes. who stole the show. And now tonight's Pump Patrol. Head to the Fred Meyer at Chinden and Glenwood to fill up for three sixty four dollars a gallon. And to find the cheapest gas in your neighborhood, just go to IdahoOnYourSide.com and click on the Features tab. It's the grand opening of Outlaw Power Sports at Mountain Home Auto Ranch with a full line of Kawasaki Power Sports. See Idaho's best selection of Kawasaki and get the grand opening savings now. The 2013 models are arriving, so we must close out 2012. Motorcycles, ATVs, watercraft, and side by sides. Outlaw Power Sports at Mountain Home Auto Ranch. Exit 95 Mountain Home. Next, two and a half men. You're nervous about a date. I haven't gone out with a 40-year-old woman since high school. Charlie's dating up. Women that age have a lot of baggage. Right, and you've just got to carry on. Next, two and a half men. Weeknights at 10 on Fox 9. couldn't wait to sleep on our new Serta Perfect Sleeper we got at Nampa Appliance and TV. What he doesn't know is that they're having a huge sale on Whirlpool Appliances. A new Energy Star refrigerator and washer and dryer will save on our utility bills. A new Energy Star refrigerator and washer and dryer will save. Morning, honey. I've got a great idea. You need a new refrigerator and a washer and dryer. Oh, you have the best ideas. Let Nampa Appliance and TV help make your dreams come true. The right price with expert advice. What's going on? The free On Your Side News app will tell you wherever you go. With news, sports, and streaming video. Free from Today 6 and Fox 9. Search Idaho On Your Side in your app store. Ask me. Why not talk to someone who owns an adjustable version of the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about my Temper Advanced Ergo. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. CenturyLink is promising to lock in the price of your internet for the next five years. That's a long time to connect to a slow DSL line from the phone company. Now is the time to get the fastest internet around. 50 megs from Cable One. Just think about all the amazing high-speed experiences you could have with us if you weren't slowed down by them. Call 1-855-CABLE-ONE today. 
The X Factor premieres Wednesday, September 12th on Fox. Now the On Your Side forecast with Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval. Temperatures are on the rise this afternoon. My three-degree guarantee, I said we'd hit 88 degrees. Just caught it right on the edge there at a 91. Tomorrow, I think we're going to drop it back down to the mid-80s. But before the weekend's out, we'll be back in those 90s. So enjoying warm summertime heat while cool weather right here in northern Canada. There's some blue showing up just behind this banner right here. And that cool weather is going to plunge into Montana, actually sending some wind all the way in from Mountain Home to points eastward during the day tomorrow. About 1.30 in the afternoon, the winds could really kick up east of Boise and maybe even around Boise will get a breeze going out, but that's the cool air to the east, warm weather to the west. So the heat's going to continue to build to the west of us tomorrow. We'll drop our temperature just a little bit. It'll hit 90 today, 88 and twin near 100 in Vegas. Still cool right along the coast, but look at that 87 degrees in Portland. What a beautiful time of year to visit the Oregon coast. Here's the air quality, and boy, what a huge change it has made in the last several days. We had so much smoke before, and now there's almost no smoke at all. Air quality just a little while ago at a 34. Forecast for tomorrow, 46. There are no burn bans in effect. Great news, good air quality again for tomorrow. Now, the Boise Valley Asthma and Allergy Clinic putting out the pollen count, and that's been on the rise back to the moderate category at a 36. Kita pod, that sagebrush that's off uh, out in the uh, desert there, we'll get rid of the bloom here, and we're going to see that number go up as you move through the month of September. It doesn't go away until you get that first uh, good killing frost. Look at the satellite picture. Definitely something interesting showing up here. Finally, some rain falling near Great Falls. That's a plunge of some uh, cool air, autumn-like air coming into Montana. That will slide to our east, but the trailing cold front behind it will come by from north to south. That'll kick up the breeze around here during the day tomorrow. At the same time, moisture from the south will stream on in. This is the moisture that I believe will give us that high cloud cover tomorrow. In fact, it could end up being mostly cloudy at times tomorrow from Boise south and eastward. From the morning hours to the middle part of the day during the afternoon, everything will start to slide to the east as this frontal system starts to push everything to the east. And so you see it here in tomorrow's map, that northerly flow, that cool air coming ever so close, warm air pushing to the west, and then it'll start to build back in. And that means our weather, look at this for the weekend, very warm conditions, if not hot weather, surging on in. We get to above 90, and we still have the benefits of some cool mornings. But that major cooling in the center part of the country where that cold front will slide to the east. This is that cold front that we're seeing coming through during the day tomorrow. That'll slide all the way into the southeastern states by the end of the weekend. So let's take a look at my on your side forecast for the day tomorrow. Temperatures uh, in the 40s and 50s, look at that, 57 in Boise, but only 45 in Nampa. Again, the airport a little milder in the afternoon, mid-80s. We drop the temperature a bit. Gusty winds could develop around 1.30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, especially Mountain Home eastward. Uh, we'll call it 75 tomorrow in the 70s in Long Valley, 80s in Boise County. A nice day coming in, mostly sunny skies, very pleasant. The breeze could kick up, and I do believe we'll get some gusty winds moving through that could affect the fire tomorrow. High clouds and sunshine, still areas of smoke. We'll have comfortable temperatures, but again, the breezes could pick up, and we could get some real gusty winds. I've got breezy here, west 10 to 20 for the Magic Valley, hitting 84 in Twin, only 73 in Gooding. But there could be some gusts of 30 to 35 as that cold front moves through later in the day tomorrow during the afternoon. Kind of that just a little hint of some autumn-like weather trying to come in, but it's really going to stay mostly to the east. So we drop the temperatures tomorrow in the mid-80s, Friday in the mid-80s, but look at the weekend warming back up into the 90s. Another cold front is poised to come through later in the day on Monday. That cooler weather will come in on Monday and Tuesday. It might only be 79 for that high temperature. Those temperatures dropping back off, and so we're getting that hint of autumn coming in. But I like the fact that the hotter weather is coming in on the weekend. I'm planning my last mm -hmm. camping trip this I weekend. Know you Getting that are. extra one in. I know a lot of people Smart. are doing that, and this is going to end up being a really, really nice weekend with light Great. winds and hotter temperatures. You know who else likes that forecast? Yes. Roaring Springs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's they're right. staying open for a couple more weekends, that's right. and I know that perfect. they've had a great season already. Yeah, so. perfect timing. Oh, thanks, They dropped their prices this time of year, too. That's yeah, true. That's, right. that's true. Remember. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Well, she wowed the crowd and stole the show last night at the Democratic National Convention. No, we're not talking about the First Lady, Michelle mm. Obama. We're talking about somebody much smaller. <laughs> she most explains. And she'll hit the Kids at conventions now. are loose cannons. So when the keynote speaker, San Antonio Mayor Julian Castro, referred to his three-year-old... Karina Victoria. The cameras naturally went to her and caught her scratching and sticking out her tongue until she suddenly noticed herself on the big screen as if it were a mirror. And I found myself whispering to her, as was once whispered to me, Que Dios te bendiga. 
May God bless you. As she flipped her hair, the tweets flew. Ready for her close-up. Work it, baby girl. To her father's surprise, delegates were laughing at a part of his speech that wasn't supposed to be funny. As a Chicago Tribune reporter tweeted, Karina Victoria Castro for Secretary of the Adorable. Next thing you know, her hair flipping was flitting around the web, put to the pop hit by Will Smith's daughter, Willow. And thus the girl, dubbed Little Miss Hair Flip, whipped her way into the annals of cute convention kids. Though the last time this happened, it involved licking rather than flipping. Who could forget Sarah Palin's daughter, Piper? And I knew their families, too. Licking and slicking her baby brother's hair as mom addressed the 2008 Republican convention. Back at the hair flip for the ages, Karina was so mesmerized, she almost forgot to join the standing ovation when her dad finished. And while the applause was music to his ears, she covered hers. Jeannie Mo, CNN. New York. I love it. That's great. She's well behaved, though. She's just paying attention to herself. She's a cute three year old girl. <laughs> Coming up next on Fox Night on Your Side tonight, millions of Americans are living with a potentially deadly condition and doing nothing about it. In many cases, they don't even know they have it. Boise Gun Company has over 5,000 guns in stock. Whether you're buying or selling a handgun, rifle, shotgun, or optics, or looking for ammunition, Boise Gun Company is here for your shooting needs. Now with two stores, shop our Boise store at 4105 Adams Street or our new store just off the Franklin exit in Nampa. We're online at boisegun.com or call 376-4440. the land that's wild and free. Boise Gun Company. It's no secret the Broncos floor the opposition. At Nampa Floors and Interiors, get floored with a soft landing. The softest carpet in the world from HGTV Home Flooring by Shaw. And right now at Nampa Floors and Interiors, 24 months no interest with payments and a free pad upgrade with your soft landing purchase. HGTV Home Flooring by Shaw. Fashionable floors that stand up to life. Team up with the best at Nampa Floors and Interiors. For the first time ever, ever, a special public auto liquidation event is being held at Internet Auto Rent and Sales. Over 350 vehicles will be liquidated to raise capital. Vehicles will be priced up to 40% off original MSRP. But please take action immediately to get incredible opportunities like 1.35% APR, no down payment, and no payments for 90 days. Many vehicles have payments under $199.99 per month. It's the automotive liquidation event only at Internet Auto Rent and Sales. Anybody can sell you a mattress, but you'll have to sleep on the mistake. Not at Mattressland Sleep Fit Center during our mistake-free mattress event. With our scientific, custom-fit, guaranteed comfort and the lowest price or your mattress is free, you can't make a mistake. Save over $400 on the Certopedic Eurotop Queen Set, now just $289. And all with unbeatable guarantees. Who has the best in mistake-free high-tech sleep savings? Not those other guys. Only Mattressland Sleep Fit Center. Find us at mattressland.com. For Emmy Award-winning news coverage, watch Fox 9 on your side at 9. CDC has released some startling numbers surrounding Americans who have high blood pressure. Yeah, this is a little disturbing. Yes. It's nearly half the 67 million who have it are not getting the proper treatment. And it's our top story in Fox Fitness right now. In fact, around 14 million of those people don't even know they have the condition. While 22 million more either choose not to take medication or are receiving the wrong treatment. If left untreated, high blood pressure can lead to a higher risk of heart attack and stroke. Doctors say the best way to treat it and even prevent it is through diet, exercise, and medicine to widen arteries. Concern over a hantavirus outbreak at a national park has now gone global. Officials have sent warnings to people in 39 countries about the potentially deadly virus that was found at Yosemite National Park. Six people have come down with the illness. Two have died. The CDC estimates about 10,000 people were at risk of exposure. Symptoms of the virus include fever, fatigue, and shortness of breath. 
West Nile virus cases continue to soar across the United States uh, because of those little buggers. That outbreak is responsible for 87 deaths so far. Cases jumped by 25% in the past week alone as the total number of cases approaches 2,000. 45% of all cases have come from Texas. Every one of the continental United States has reported at least one case of the West Nile virus. Health officials still aren't sure what's behind this year's record-breaking outbreak. Here in Idaho, eight people have been diagnosed with West Nile. They've come from five different counties, Twin Falls, Elmore, Gem, Payette, and Washington. Last year, just three people were diagnosed in the Gem State. And crews have found mosquitoes with the virus in 10 different counties. And back in 2006, Idaho led the nation in West Nile cases, and 23 people died from it that year. So, Roland, it turns out men and women may really not see eye to hmm. eye. That's science. Researchers say men and women actually process what they see in different ways. A recent study shows men are more likely to see finer details than things that move quickly. Women can differentiate between colors better. At this point, researchers believe testosterone could be one of the reasons for those differences. I question it when it yeah. comes to cleaning the house. Mm -hmm. Well, the fine detail for me is long gone <laughs> with these <laughs> eyes, I'm afraid. So when it comes to poverty, it doesn't exactly look the same everywhere. No, and a charity known for helping the world's most vulnerable people has launched its first ever appeal to help British children. Matthew Chance has the story. It may be one of the world's richest countries, but pockets of Britain are increasingly gripped by poverty. This Save the Children campaign highlights one part of the problem, kids from impoverished homes doing worse at schools. Amid a recession, Britain's poorest children, says the charity, are missing out on essentials like toys, school trips and new shoes. Poverty in the UK is different to poverty in some of the poorest countries in the world. It's about children participating fully in society. But we are starting to see that with the rising pressures on families at the moment around high unemployment, around rising living costs, um, around government cuts, we are starting to see that, 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 that families need to provide the basics and they're struggling to do that. Families like Natalie and her two-year-old son, Noah, an unemployed single mum, Natalie says her state benefits don't even pay the bills. It's cold here, you know, but it'll be jumpers and keep warm in the house and blankets rather than turn the fire on or, or turn the radiators up. You just can't afford to run them. There's even a growing problem in Britain with food. Unemployed or overburdened with debt, aid workers say thousands of British families are turning to food banks, like this one outside London, for basic supplies. The charity puts together hampers for people finding it difficult to feed their families alone. Well, this is the kind of food you can expect when a charity in Britain packs your weekly food bags. There's some over here that have already been prepared. You can see there's some, some milk, some, some tea bags, uh, some biscuits as well. Over here, some chopped tomatoes in a can, some baked beans, um, pasta ready to be cooked, uh, lots of other things. It's all expected to last between seven and ten days for a single family, so it's not that much. But charities are saying that as the global recession intensifies, more and more British families will be dependent on handouts like these just to survive. The British government says it's committed to eradicating child poverty. Save the Children complains they're not doing enough. And this first British fundraising campaign says the charity may keep some children here off the poverty line. Matthew Chance, CNN London. Still ahead on Fox 9 on your side, he's known as the man who created the internet. And he has a new project. Must be something pretty cool, right? Penny, the girl next door. Cool. Redefined. Hey there, fellow procrastinators. R.C. Willie's amazing Labor Day sale is almost over. So if you don't want to miss out, scoot. One of our biggest sales of the year ends Saturday. Take advantage of incredible savings on furniture, mattresses, appliances, electronics, and flooring. Our selection is enormous. Holiday savings are hot, and your purchase is in stock for immediate delivery. Plus, with the purchase of $4.99 or more, this Nook Simple Touch is only $29. RC Willie, your home, your way. Even on the most perfect day, the unexpected can happen.
But with just one call to their local Red Ribbon expert at Overhead Door, they can get their garage door fixed or replaced in a jiffy. The sun is 93 million miles from the Earth. This time of year, it sure feels a lot closer. If your vehicle is feeling the heat as much as you are, it might be time for an upgrade. Don't spend another moment away from the people you love and the places you want to go, only to end up stranded in the summer sun. 15 minutes from the heart of Boise, you'll find Idaho's largest selection. With over 2,000 new and used vehicles to choose from, you'll be able to chill out and ride away in style. The Idaho Center Auto Mall, just off the Garrity exit in Nampa. Have you heard the news? It's time to get ready, set, shop. The new North Boise Goodwill opens Thursday, September 6th at 9 a.m. Come shop all the exciting bargains during our grand opening event. You'll find gently used books, great household items, furniture, and of course, fun fashions for the whole family. You'll never know what you'll find. Plus, you can register to win great prizes. It's an event you won't want to miss. So get ready, set, and shop September 6th at the new Goodwill, 7000 West State Street. Highest high in September. Come you're on, guessing tell first? Me your guess He's been is. trying to get me to tell me in my guess so you can take my guess. So I'm going first. All right, go ahead. 90. Here. Do you want here. the multiple choice? Oh, we got multiple choice? Yes, there it is, right oh, here. Well. Okay, Scott, you didn't say that. <laughs> your initial guess in the 90s, Roland, was not right. So here's the hint. It's uh, at least 100. So this is it. What is the hottest uh, high temperature in Boise ever recorded? 100, 101, 102, 104. Redemption, 102. I'll take the 104. Roland says 102. Michelle says 104. Roland, Ooh. nice comeback on that one. 102 yes. degrees setback. I believe it was in the 50s, but it was on the 1st of uh, September. Oh, that makes sense. And of course, those high temperatures <laughs> do drop off. So let's take a look at what we can expect to have uh, during the month of September. Of course, we do expect the cool down, and we're certainly going to get that here. Temperatures normally dropping as the sun angle decreases, the length of the day shortens. Of course, those temperatures drop, and the fog instance, by the way, will start to go up. You start to see a lot more moisture on the ground uh, when you want heading, uh, kids off to school in the morning hours. So during the month of September, as far as Boise goes, typically this is the normal high and low on the 1st of September, 85 and 56. This is pretty much where we'll be during the day tomorrow, a little bit above normal because those numbers are dropping by the end of the month, 73, so a big drop. Normal high 73 at the end of the month with a normal low of 46. And autumn will arrive this September. It's anywhere from the 19th to the 22nd. It'll be on the 22nd at 849 Mountain Time. Typically, we get about a half inch of precipitation during the month of September, so it is a little bit more moist towards the end of the month. We typically get that. We've had as much as over two two inches of rain back in 1976. I think there might have even been a tropical disturbance that had moved all the way up and the remnants came in to Idaho for that one. I'll have to check the records on that. If you have any questions or photographs you'd like to share, you can reach me at weather at fox9now.com. Roland, you get your chest all puffed out over there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, well, yeah, but I, I think it's time for me to cut way back on watering the lawn. You know, I did that today. Yeah. Is that right? I cut the numbers in half. Yeah. And, and I want my tomatoes to get riper faster. Yeah, it's not happening, is it? Mm. Just, maybe it's the lack of sunshine. Mm. Yeah. I'll, I'll say that. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Scott. Well, you think the man credited with developing the World Wide Web would... Uh,